I can feel the nerds preparing to revoke my nerd license with this one. <laughs> uh, new rock stars are going to be so disappointed in me. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on my thoughts on movies and stuff. Today's video is on Dune, a feature film adaptation of Frank Herbert's novel where a son of a noble family is entrusted with the task of safeguarding the most valuable asset and most vital element in the galaxy. Cinnamon cocaine. I'm just kidding, it's called spice. Do not mix cinnamon into your cocaine. I don't know what I'm talking about. But before we get into it, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified about every time we upload. After that, visit our Patreon and let us hold a dollar. Not only will you be supporting the channel, but you'll be joining the Thought Chamber, a private Discord server where us nerds can continue this conversation about movies and stuff. Now with all that said, let's dive right into that Dune. Dune is a failure by no measure. Most people love it, and those who hate it are being chased out of town with torches and pitchforks. Don't worry, they haven't found me yet. There's so much to be praised for the vision. The source material is complex, and if you've seen the book, then you know that it's a thick, thick boy. But somehow, the movie seems to tackle the issue of translating the book into the visual medium of film with relative ease. I mean, they did a much better job than the people behind the Golden Compass. So I'm gonna keep riding this wave of positivity, and I'm gonna tell you about the things I enjoyed about Dune. Smile, Gurney. I am smiling. The world feels big, and the quality of the world building really checks out. It feels like they crossed every T, dotted every I, and they limited Zendaya's screen time so that it wouldn't pale in comparison to her beauty. And speaking of Zendaya, the cast really held together and delivered amazing performances. The characters also feel incredibly real, and they all have their own cultures and practices, and there's a complexity to them that felt tangible and real and like they're actual people you could bump into in space, I guess. <laughs> You're not bumping into them on the street. And yeah, that's it. That's all the good things I have to say about this movie. Now let's roast this bad boy. Yeah, you. Yeah. Want some muscle? I did? No. Okay, I'm coming out swinging, so back away from the closet. This movie is long, boring, slow, and stupid. You can write that on my tombstone. I stand by those four words more than I stand at the bus stop. And I don't have a car. I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the city, but the city that the Harkonnens built on Arrakis, well, it looks like it's made out of brown paper origami at least from the aerial shots. And a major problem I have with this movie is that unlike Star Wars, this isn't happening in a galaxy far, far away a long time ago. It happens far, far in our future. In fact, it happens so far in our future that I'm surprised we still have physical bodies and haven't uploaded ourselves to the cloud. But nevertheless, it's the future, right? So the technology should be busted. Yeah, no, you'd think, you'd really think that the technology would take us to a new place, yet somehow the people with ships capable of interstellar travel are getting their cheeks clapped by the guys whose signature and only move is hiding in the sand. <sighs> We've come a long way. We've come a long way standing in the same place. <laughs> Okay, do keep in mind that in no way am I an expert on these things, but I feel like if we already have things like thermal vision, sonar, satellite imaging, and unmanned drones that can profile people and take the shot without human authorization, I'm sure that that would have no problem bodying a couple of bodies hiding under some dirt. Especially in the year 10,191. Crummy technology aside, I understand that the action might not necessarily be a massive deal breaker for most people, but I hated the action. All the fight scenes either make no sense to me or are just incredibly uninteresting. And I knew that this was going to be a problem right off the bat with the first one. Watching Paul training with Thanos was incredibly stale. And I guess maybe the choreography wasn't so bad. 
I, it's just the fights were boring. If you, you gotta have an interesting fight. Their ridiculous full body JAV censorship shields were also ridiculously stupid. What's the point of having a shield that can only block high velocity weapons? If it can't block low velocity weapons, do. Those guys would have been better going out to fight in chainmail. And despite young Agent K being the head of their military or whatever, at no point did he seem to employ any kind of real battle strategy. Get everything with guns off the ground! Go! This is an extermination. The moment the Harkonnens come down from the sky like a Batista bomb, Cable literally wakes up and tells the soldiers to do their best impression of a West Side Story knife fight. Their only strategy seemingly being group up and hit it till it dies. Hit it till it dies! Also, where are the guns? Where are they? If this movie is meant to be happening in the year 10,191, we've had guns since 1364. You're telling me nobody can shoot its snake eyes all over again? And you can't tell me that guns wouldn't work because you've already established that their stupid human shields are trash. And here's the thing, when they need to kick the door down or get a certain obstacle out of their way, carve a door into a secret rock entrance, they don't use a battering ram. They use an all-purpose diamond laser cutter to cut a hole in the wall. But here's the thing, if you have a laser that can literally cut through everything, why are you wasting your time with swords? I'm sorry, but when the height of your action is watching Paul fight a tiny robot and almost lose, you've messed up. Something else I noticed is that the desert planet of Tatooine, sorry, I meant the desert planet of Jakku, Sorry, the desert planet of Arrakis is meant to be so hot that people dying from the heat was meant to be a norm. I felt hotter watching Jon Snow north of the wall. I understand that they wear these special suits that recycle all the water their bodies produce, but they don't always wear those suits. Can, can I see a little sweat? Burnt skin? They didn't even put on sunscreen. Does this look like people who don't need sunscreen? I also don't get how Duncan Idaho, which is totally not a stripper name, found Paul and his mother in the middle of the desert. They could have been anywhere, yet somehow he found them like they had GPS tracking. I don't know, maybe he could see the sun reflecting off their pale white skin, I don't know, I don't know. The rest of my complaints are as follows. Mama Atreides is meant to be a part of her secret space witch cult called the Binny Jean. <laughs> And she's been training him in the ways of space witchcraft and wizardry, but he sucks at it. He's so bad at it, he speaks parcel tongue with an accent. And the things I wanted to see were the things that they decided to take away from me in this movie. Batista's in the movie for like five minutes. Zendaya's in the movie for like seven minutes. And most of her time is spent doing her best impression of an early 2000s music video. Once again, not her fault. I do not blame her for that. All of the characters I was interested in died before we could learn more about them or before they could feel important to the plot. Jason Momoa doesn't even say or do anything interesting. He was like the super cool dude from college who came to visit his family for the summer. His only purpose was to prove Paul's dreams weren't just nocturnal emissions. Paul. Now he's dead. Atreides Sr. was a good leader, a good father, and despite his marital troubles, he tried to be a good husband. I would have loved to see more of him, but now he's dead too. Jamis. I don't know if I'm saying the name right, I don't remember how they say it in the movie, but Jamis got bodied by Paul. Even though Paul saw a vision where he spoke to him from the future as a friend, which left me confused. I guess we should wait until the next movie, maybe he comes back from the dead, who knows how far they'll push this white savior narrative. But for all intents and purposes, he's dead too. Yeah, they practically killed the only other black guy in this movie. And then of course I have more behind the camera notes, but I'm the most scared to say these because I have so much respect for these people. All right, we wrote these jokes, let's see it through. Dennis Lenovo is an excellent filmmaker and, and I've enjoyed all of the movies of his I've seen. Arrival is one of my favorite movies ever. 
but I feel like he dropped the ball on this one. And I don't know why he's messing around with all the slow-mo, but he better put it back before Zack Snyder finds out he used it like this. Another thing is, I heard Christopher Nolan loved Dune. And I'm not surprised because they seem to have the same approach he used on the sound mixing of Tenet. Just the, the less you can hear, the better. And I'm not happy with the score. I think this is the first time Hans Zimmer has failed to make me feel something. But he's one of my favorite composers, so we're gonna pretend like I didn't say that. I don't know guys, it, it, it just felt like too much hype. My expectations were too high for a movie that ended up just being Timothy Chalamet getting high on Desert Nesquik. Paul Atreides is just not an interesting main character to me. And that's not Timothy Chalamet's fault. Timothy Chalamet is wonderful in this movie, it's just that Paul is... He's bland, he's boring, and we don't know that much about him. Neville Longbottom is more interesting than Paul. But I've said enough, let's wrap this up. Rotten Tomatoes gave this film an 83%, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. And IMDb gave it an 8.2 out of 10. 8 point bloody two, jeez, madness. I told you everybody liked this movie. Let me remind you guys that I score these movies based on my enjoyment, on how fun the ride was. And I watched this movie twice, so I'm very sure and I have no shame in saying that this movie gets a 2.6 out of 5. But what do you guys think? Was Dune a cinematic masterpiece or was it a massive whiff? Let me know in the comments, subscribe for more content and don't forget to hit the bell to be notified about every time we upload. After that, visit our Patreon and let us hold a dollar. I will see all my patrons in the thoughts chamber. Thank you for your support. Until the next video, take care guys. Bye bye.